Okay. So the current affairs. Okay. So we'll see with as usual uh, with a couple of current affairs topic important for the KS uh, prelims examination perspective, and it also helps in the IAS uh, exam prelims as well. So let's start with the main uh, function. I'll start sharing my screen. Share. I hope you can see my screen. If not, let us know. So this is the current of this. Okay. So last time, as I see, we saw a few of the current affairs topics in part of the prelims paper too, especially under the Karnataka state. All right, let's get into the Karnataka state. Uh, I want to discuss on the two more uh, additional topics as part of the Karnataka state. Uh, let, me, let me check my audios. All right. So I want to discuss about this. Uh, I think last time we discussed about game, Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship. Like who, when, what is all about this, right? What it supports, mass entrepreneurship is about micro and small. It is not about medium. And we also spoke about Chandra Khan Kusnur. He is, uh, I think in KS, these are typical questions which will be asked on the personalities who especially die. And then uh, let's talk about Manglu chemical and fertilizers resumes production. This is good thing and most unexpected thing. But what we need to know is Karnataka's only chemical fertilizer manufacturer, right? So it's the only chemical fertilizer manufacturer of Karnataka. No, no one manufactures chemical fertilizers, right? It's only the Manglu chemical and fertilizers uh, or the manufacturers. So what do they? Let's go a little bit deep. What do they actually manufacture? They manufacture urea and diammonium phosphate fertilizers. Okay. So urea we will be usually aware of, and we should also be aware of other fertilizers. Okay. Uh, other is the diammonium phosphate. There are many many fertilizers. Again, this particular mangrove chemical and fertilizers industry doesn't manufacture. And next is, uh, it also produces ammonium bicarbonate, okay? Ammonium bicarbonate is for biscuit manufacturing. In biscuit manufacturing, there are a lot of chemicals are used. And one such chemical is, comes from such Mangal chemical fertilizers factory. That is ammonium bicarbonate. We can get into details what is the use of ammonium bicarbonate in biscuit manufacturing industries, but we should, we typically avoid going to such details. This should be good enough, fair enough. <clears throat> okay, in 2012, related question on uh, KS prelims that asked about electricity distribution companies. Okay. Uh, can you see the relevance? So this is electricity distribution companies. This is also kind of a yeah, government company. And there, the question was specifically asked like electric distributed companies were abbreviated as. But they given options like Bescom, Mescom, Sescom, Putco. So, so we, you had to select one, the candidate had to select the right option. Like what are the correct abbreviations of electricity company? Okay. So that, that was it. Uh, short uh, current affairs topic on Mangalore uh, this one. Why it resumes production? Because it was close due to COVID-19, right? All right. So next is uh, Karnataka partners with Art of Living to rejuvenate water resources. Remember, anything with, so especially, right, especially in prelims, there, anything related to water is very important in prelims and mains perspective. And for prelims, if there's any NGOs involved, Okay, and it is more important. And if something government and NGO is doing together to solve some of the issues with environmental issues, it becomes the utmost important. Remember this, this is not only applicable for uh, Karnataka administrative, it may be any administrative services. It may be in a, any other state like Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu, or it may be at the national level, UPSC. 
So this is very important from the police perspective. Whenever there is a state and then there is some NGOs or state plus our private companies together solving a particular social issues or of environmental issues, it becomes utmost important for us. So we, let's go into little more details, like what are they doing? So there are nine districts where there is huge shortage of water resources. Okay. And Karnataka has partnered partner with Art of Living. So why Art of Living? Okay. Art of Living had done that tour now themselves in rejuvenating in Maharashtra. So Karnataka has followed the same model, working with Art of Living to rejuvenate water resources in nine districts. So what is rejuvenation? Let's get into details, right? Rejuvenation is about enrichment of water resources. It may be river water or it may be ground water. So if, for example, if, if we, if the water is allowed to flow into the sea, then not only we're losing enormous amount of water, but also we are also reducing the seepages of water to recharge the ground table, ground water table. Right. What happens in that case? They will construct minor check dams. This is called check dams, not like dam, like major dams. Major dams has huge social implications, huge investment, huge problems, and it takes a lot of time to construct the major dams. Like it will submerge the entire area of forest area. Right. There will be an environmentalist who will be protesting, like animals, birds, forest will be submerged. Or there are some social activists for tribal people whose land, who will be losing their lands, livelihood. Right. So these are the problems with very huge dam project, like multi-irrigational projects, right. multi-purpose dam projects. But so for simple rejuvenation of groundwater, all we need to have to have a check dams at regular intervals. These are small, small dams, very, very minor small dams, which actually stops water flowing to a certain extent. Okay. It's like water will flow, but it will be slowed down. So such check, check dams are very important for groundwater table recharge, recharge, right? If the water stays for some time, the water will automatically seep inside the earth and it will reach the groundwater. And that will be helpful for our irrigations. So such kind of rejuvenation and improved groundwater is being nine carried on in nine districts. So you really, I mean, it's very rare for in KS to ask what are the districts, but yes, but you cannot totally ignore that as well. So we should have some fair amount of idea with like what are those nine districts, right? Even otherwise, prelims also just for an informational purpose, right? We should be aware of like where are the districts of Karnataka which are facing severe voltage water crisis as part of be aspiring to be a case officer right or for that matter IAS officer also we should know which all the states which have water crisis right so now what are the districts Shumaga, Udupi right? Shumaga, we know in near Sira there are like joke falls um, I think one of the river flows there but still there are water crisis right this is a uh, this is a questionable thing, right? which is a goes against our common perceptions. And then Uttar Kannada, Uttar Kannada is part of this Western Ghats. So it's, uh, but still there is water crisis. Right? See, see the thing, right? Chitradurga, we can understand. There are more of like barren lands and there's no river specifically here. Baldari, yes. Kolar, yes. Kolar is highly water shortage areas. Yadgir, yes, highly. So Kodagu. So Kodagu is basically a tourist spot. We have seen Hebe waterfalls. We have seen many water resources, but still there are water shortage areas. I mean, there is some questionable things. So what might be that? Maybe the water is allowed to flow freely. Not, it doesn't have any enough check dams to collect the water. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe this kind of projects have been undertaken. And Tunku is, of course, Tunku has very shortage because there's not much water resources there. So like that. So we should have, so these examples break down our common perceptions that where there's no rainfall, where there is no river, where there's very dry lands, there is water shortage, of course, yes. But 
question is is it those the only areas which have water shortages no we also have water shortages where we are perception is there where there is enough rainfall where there is enough vegetation enough river but still there are water uh, water scarcity so these are the examples which give you those ideas okay there so there are the total nine districts like number doesn't matter this examples we should have understanding of that and then um, such way if you understand that right, you it's very easy for you to remember in examination otherwise if you just by heart this nine districts i'm sure i think such kind such such kind of by heart will be hundreds of examples but you will never recollect and you will most probably choose the wrong options so just try to go deeper into the example like why does why does districts are about such shortage what is the district is all about fine and then now any program needs economic resources and this is funded by manrega so we did see manrega right uh, manrega is through an act in 2006 it was made mandatorily for the governments for the state governments to provide unskilled rural employment to households for how many days 100 days per year so what they will do they will they will group up this unskilled households from villages and they'll make them to build check dams it doesn't require too much engineering skills all they need to have some materials they have to block the water resources fine all right so any other questions in this two topics i hope you people are clear right those who joined recently i anyway i'm recording the session i will send uh, through your email gmail or uh, yeah since i think <coughs> i'm planning to upload in youtube as well that will be easier if i because last time when i send uh, my google drive first thing is storage is it's getting full and next is few of the students faced uh, uh, difficulties in downloading the content so i'm planning to put up in uh, youtube uh, i'll share those links all this current affairs links so it will be easy for anyone to uh, see the videos and there will be continuity as well between two videos we can have a playlist the other advantages as well so i'll share those uh, links <clears throat> not to worry for those who joined all right so there's one more current affairs topic i wanted to discuss okay and um, that is about uh, in paper 2 general studies 1 under mains so ks mains have told in there are few units in across all the papers all the five papers right uh, they call the four papers like fourth paper it, like the last one is about ethics doesn't there wouldn't be much uh, current affairs there at least in the four general studies mains paper there are few units which are actually have, have current affairs relevance so one such is paper 2 in section 3 in an economy section 3 like each paper has how many sections three sections right in paper 2 general studies 1 there is section 3 indian economy indian economy is mostly about current affairs okay so this is very important topic for indian economy indian economy is not only about measuring the gdp national income this one part of it other part of it is uh, maybe the policies economic policies what is the budget what is the allocations what is the revenue these kind of uh, developmental activities programs and other is actual infrastructure development now the third part which is the infrastructure development of indian economy is very very critical and very very crucial because simply the fact that the current central government has total focus on in, like investment on uh, infrastructure so what is infrastructure what is infrastructure roads railways which anything which supports in production of goods and movements of transportation and transfer of goods infrastructure may be industries infrastructure may be heavy machineries infrastructure may be roads infrastructure may be social infrastructure like giving skills to people 
educating people. There's of social infrastructure. So anything and everything related which aids or which are the means to produce the goods, right? So goods is the end. Goods and services are the end, right? The means is the infrastructure. So now right now India is focusing on the means because without any means, we can't really produce the goods. It's as simple as that. So anything related to infrastructure in Indian, Indian economy takes the precedence over other topics. So once, I, and especially in case, if something is happening in Karnataka and which is a very significant at the national level, then I think almost certainly you can expect questions from there. For this example, this one. See, India's longest and tallest wire duct in Vijayapura district. So look at this. Pay attention. Like India's longest. I'm looking at the national scale. The wire duct is in Vijayanagar, Vijayapura district. What is Vijayapura? The earlier to known as Bijapur district of Karnataka. In Bijapur district, we are having the longest and the tallest wire duct of India. It was opened recently in the April month. So now people might ask, what is wire duct? See, wire duct is nothing but an aqueduct or elevated canal with road on top. See, if someone has seen travel to Mysore, right? How how the Kaveri water from KRS Dam reaches to Bangalore? Right? We do have Kaveri water connections in several areas of Bangalore, typically the old areas like Malayshwaram, Melanka, right? So how the water is coming from uh, KRS Dam to Bangalore? Right? Is it through canals? Have you seen any canals there? No. Is it through some sort of uh, underground pipelines? No. So you have seen wire ducts. They are like elevated, uh, if you see the elevated, uh, something like a flyover, it will be there, like elevated channels. So I hope many people would have observed that. So this is called viaduct. So there will be pillars. On top of pillars, there will be like a huge pipes, square, square shaped pipes. Okay? It's a not cubular pipes, it's a square shaped. So the water will be flowing within the shaped uh, tubes, square shaped tubes, like very big, like concrete tubes. On top of the concrete tube, there'll be roads for people to uh, pass along, walk along, or some two wheelers can pass along. So these kind of wire ducts are being constructed everywhere. First it started with KRS Dam to Bangalore. Now, it, now they are already <clears throat> building it in Vijayapura district. So what is the main purpose of this wire duct? Aqueduct or elevated canal with road on top. What is the main purpose? For Bangalore, it was drinking water. For Vijayapura, it was irrigation. EGP, Vijay, irrigation in Vijayapura and Indi Taluk villages. So we know that <clears throat> uh, there is a water square city in uh, Bijapur. Like not all the places, there are few places. To get this irrigation purpose, we can we, either we can construct canals. The canals is a problem with canals is first thing, first, first and foremost, it requires land, huge amount of land. And as we know, acquiring land is a very big problem in India. Simple fact, people can open the doors of court and the court cases can go long, long enough. Long enough that the entire project purpose will be lost. So other option is this wire type. So construct few pillars. Fine, and get the canal on top of the pillars, like elevated canals. Fine. So now, few of the information. So, wire duct is part of which project? Mulawadi lift irrigation project under Upper Krishna phase water. Right. So they might ask, like, India's long, longest Vijayapura district, which was the river? Which river water were drawing from? It is Krishna River. Right. It, it comes under Upper Upper Krishna phase. So. So in economic class or Karnataka economic class, try to understand what are the phases of the upper Krishna. There are three phase, three or four phases. Phase one comprised of some dam construction, phase two, some canal. This may be phase three. Okay. So it's called lift irrigation project. So why I'm why this is important? I told you as a, it's at the in national level, something happened in Karnataka. And as well, we are getting questions of this format. Uh, anything related to water and rivers is very important. So in 2015 prelims, they asked about rivers and dams. Right? They, they spoke about KRS, 
they told which dams are constructed and which rivers. Like we know about KRS and uh, Navila Tirtha was Malaprabha, Geru Sopa was Sharavati, Hidakal was Malaprabha. <coughs> So will this mean we need to know all the dams of all the rivers? No, absolutely no. We need to know at least the main dams. So now question is what is main dams or important dams? Important dams are those dams which are in use for an year. Okay. And important dams are main dams which are which has given, which are the pride of Karnataka. The pride of Karnataka is KRS. Pride of Karnataka is Hidakal. The options given in K prelims were such that if a student knew only this option, the KRS is Kaveri, the student could have solved this whole problem. All the, so the option will be like match the following list one to list two. And there will be only one option in the prelims option answers where Say, for example, A is Kaveri and point number three is KRS. So they'll give an A is to three as option one. I'll show you the question sometime. Just try to understand if you, a student understood only this KRS Kaveri, he is lucky enough to answer these questions. But that doesn't mean we have to know only KRS. That doesn't mean that what, that's what I'm trying to say. You need to know at least the jewels, jewels, the important dams of Karnataka. KRS, what is Hidakal, right? Hidakal Dam, Batak Prabha, and which are in news. Navila Tirta and all, if you know, it's fine. Otherwise, you can skip it. Geru Sapa and all, these are all like, yeah, it's, it's really difficult to uh, recollect this uh, kind of dam names. All right, enough said. So, anything else? Uh, so, I'll pause for a minute. If any questions on current affairs, Please let me know. I really go. I got few of the emails from students asking about the any websites to refer for current affairs. So, so typically, what I suggest is Hindu is the best source. Okay, so keep studying Hindu and keep open your eyes for such topics. The reason I am doing current affairs as along is one thing is to give information. The other thing is to give to tune the students. Uh, with respect to how exactly we have to look for information in news. Like, like not all news are important. We need to know like what news we need to read and within that news, what exactly we need to look at. All right. So we, this takes time. Like it takes one month, two months. We'll continuously engage this current affairs topic. Try to understand like the meta part of these teachings. Right? Meta part is what? One is what I'm teaching is information. Meta part is why I'm teaching this information. Like if you understand, if you try to recollect, focus on both. Like why particular today, why I picked up this wire deck which I for this trick, right? So if you understand why part of it, then you'll easily able to understand what else, like related such topics you can look for in current affairs. So start with Hindu, okay, and read Kurukshetra and Yojana. I know it's very it's not easy to read Yojana and Kurukshetra, but try to read one or two topics, like at least 15, 20 minutes every week. And Saturday or Sunday, spend some time, an hour or so on Kurukshetra and Yojana. And then you will slowly get into this uh, track. Okay, enough said. Uh, anything else? Post me a question. Okay. Uh, I see a few of the chats. Okay. So, All right, let's start with the uh, geography. So what were we looking in geography? We are looking in geography, this. So this is KS, General Studies, okay, two in that. This is section one, right? Section one was with, uh, Regarding physical geography, right? And there are three sections, right? And then in that section, we're talking about unit one, 
lithosphere. Fine. In this unit, we are doing a start one topic. What is that topic? Geomorphology. Right? So in geography, right, there's a pattern. Um, usually the basics classes will go really slow because of two reasons. It is the first classes. Other things, once you know the basics, then the later classes will be very easy. And uh, though there are three sections and each section has six units, don't get overwhelmed that each unit will have same amount of time. No, that doesn't take so long. A uh, few classes it might take, we can finish up two to three units in one class, later part. At least in initial part, the student has to focus on basics, which is very, very crucial for geography. And most of the questions come in basics only. And then uh, other questions are also can be derived or answered based on the pure basics knowledge. That's why basics takes a good amount of time. Let's give it the time it takes. There is no hurry. We, have, we don't have any hurry. We'll take that time, whatever it takes. Okay? Because if you hurry up and start discussing very swiftly, then two things might probably happen. The students might lose, lose focus or interest in geography. Fine. And then the student might start answering the wrong, wrong answers. All right. So in this job morphology, what were we discussing? We were discussing about... We were discussing about... Uh, <clears throat> mass moments, right? This is the mass moment, okay? So mass moment, so mass moment, uh, uh, mass moment we discussed, mass moment is purely due to gravitation, right? The last class we discussed this. And there's nothing to do with the weathering agents or the transportation agents, the erosion. It's nothing to do with mass moments. In fact, the, the erosional agents such as water, air are carried along with the rock debris down the slope by the effect of gravitational force. And of course, it doesn't mean that weathering process has no significance in mass moments. It does have. Like we did discuss this. It does has in the sense it aids mass moments. Like for example, mass movement of weathered materials has a far more impact on unweathered uh, uh, unweathered rock rock beds. So this is one one part of it. The other part of it, we saw a few of the things where mass moments are very important. So what is very important in the sense, like what are the agents, like what are the things which favor mass moments? So we know the mass, if the vertical cliff, if the steep is slow, if there's abundant rainfall, if it is scarcity of vegetation, these are the scenarios where there is mass moment, chances are very high. So that means like what, 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 what did that means? Like if you see the remove the support, of from the rock bed or remove the support in the flow in the slope which is stopping this mass moment right such will cause more trigger it will activate mass moments if you increase the gradient it will activate mass moment if you overload remember i spoke about uttarakhand floods where water saturated the <coughs> rock debris it's overloaded those rock debris and that was the main reason for it to for the the, or to flow down down the hill and causing devastations. Like we have a movie called Badrinath in Hindi, if some of people have observed. That's the whole reason. Right? It's not because, yes, there is water, dam got broke and there was water gush, gushing in. But problem is before that, there was enough situation made, enough mass movement of activated due to overloading of addition of waters. Of course, the earthquake explosion also activates mass movement. There is uh, if the heavy drawdown of water. Remember, I gave an example of the Haradun, how it was formed. The heavy drawdown of uh, water in the Himalayan lakes and indiscriminate removal of natural vegetation. These are all forms of where activation mass movement happens. 
so now question is i have talked about this is this uh, let's talk about this class let's let's this is mass moment right so let's talk about the types types of mass moment what is one is heave fine i'll explain this let's write down this flow and slide so what's our imagination now the mass moment we imagine some sort of rock debris or soil flowing down the slope do the effect of gravitation this is our imagination good With, within this context of imagination there's something called flow and slide okay let's talk about heave later in a moment see flow is nothing but let's take one two point color so flow you know there is a slope if there is rock debris or rock bed whatever it is if it is slow it is very slowly going down the hill it's called slide if it's going very fast right it got it is more it's a flow so that's how they are differentiated that if same material same rock bed right if it slowly come down the hill is called slide it's sliding right if it's flowing is is gushing like water it's gushing out those two um, uh, things are part of the slope gradient movement but how about this uh, heave heave is nothing but this is important uh, pay attention so heave is nothing but upward movement of soil or rock bed debris you know, upward against the gravity how it happens for example in places where there is in temperate regions where is temperate regions at 45 degree latitudes so in temperate regions like in the places of russia china above right us so there is enough hard snow this is ice under the ground right there is a ground layer fine and there is ice right we know as ice becomes ice right from water to ice when it's converting the volume increases right when the volume increases right this guy will push the rocks if the If the rocks is there, they will get pushed. Fine, so it will form something like this. This was the original state, and then this will go like this. Fine, this will get pushed up. I mean, very up, significantly. Like not like a uh, like small bump or no. It will get very huge bump. It will. So it will swell the ground, and all the rocks will get collected something like this. on top of this so this is called heave usually the frost is the reason for heave there is some other reasons also like in few of the desert region the salt will also get heaved the salt will also get expanded and it will move the rocks up fine so these are the types of mass movement heave flow and slide so now let's say so how are these uh, related so these are related something like this so this this is very important to know so how are these related like this is and uh, they call a relationship diagram so if say if, if this is a flow okay uh, if this is a slide okay and this is a heave flow slide heave these are the three types of uh, mass moments so this is flow wet and dry and then fast flow the 
So one thing we should understand, flow happens when there is wetness and there is flow is fast. Right? Slide is happens in areas where it is dry areas. Capture this in your imagination. Fast, there's heavy rainfall, there's heavy wet, the mud is flowing, gushing out, the mud flow, that is fast, that is flow. Slide is something is happening in very dry areas, slows, right? It may be fast slide, it may be slow slide, we don't know, maybe both. Right? So one thing is sure it is dry areas. Heave, it is very slow. One thing is, you know, is heave is slow. Right? It may be wet or it may be dry. Right? Like the moment we saw in, uh, right, in, 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 uh, in desert regions where the salt swell, it's a dry areas. But we don't know, it may be dry or in the temperate areas, it may be wet because of the frost, swelling up of the frost underneath the ground, right? It may be dry, it may be wet. It may be dry or it may be wet, it is definitely slow process. Okay. Slide is definitely right, it may be fast or it may be slow. Are you getting it? This is how we try to relate these things, the types. So that you, the student will not get confused in the prelims uh, while answering the questions of this format. So what kind of questions they might ask? They ask some derived questions out of this. Okay. So now what are the derived questions? So they might ask something like, okay, in the desert regions, okay, uh, what kind of, uh, <clears throat> what kind of mass movement can be observed? So we can see in the desert regions, they will give three options, flow, slide, and heave. Right? So you know desert region, it is dry. So if it is dry, then definitely what is out of the picture? Flow is out of the picture. Then, then what are the other two types? Yes, it may be slide or it may be heave. Right? Few of the students who have not, who try to apply their common sense in these questions, and try to answer, most probably we get uh, get like a wrong answer. They might miss out heave, mention to miss out heave. They might only opt for the slide options. It can happen, right? And we'll be losing marks. So we should know this main diagram, how are they related. All right, so next get on to the one more topic. Now we saw the types of mass movement. Now we will also see how are the classes of mass movement. What are the classes of mass movement? Okay. So what do you mean by classes? Right. And what do you mean by type? See, type is nothing but which is general across the class. For example, type of gender, male, female, right? These are types. And a class, what is a class? Group of students, right? class one, class two, class three. It may have both the types, but they come under a particular grade, particular understanding. Those are people who are have a particular agenda, right? So that is class. There's a difference between class and there's a difference between types. All right, let's say what are the classes? So even the classes all, like they're basically made into slow moments and rapid moments. Slow and rapid. These are the classes. These, these, like, these are the set of examples which are categorized under slow. These are the set of things which are categorized under rapid. Means classes mean most observable things, observable things in nature. We try to classify them, right? Remember, human nature is to classify things. Right? We classify these are the topics belong to geography. We classify these are the topics belong to economy. We classify these are the topics belong to social right but it's only the mere understanding purposes right but 
the matter of the fact is a top given a topic can be mapped to any classifications can be mapped cannot be mapped for example in economy i spoke about infrastructure right right now infrastructure we i told about wire ducts the it's part of the infrastructure it might also be part of the rural development right we can put that topic in, under rural development a different classifications because it, the purpose of that wire duct is basically to get water to irrigation irrigate the fields that means the the rural economy is based basically agriculture agro based economy and then that's why it may be part of the rural development so we can have topics interchange between classes between the <coughs> classes so just a general understanding a slow movement a rapid movement just a general understanding why i'm telling you this just for understanding means it doesn't exam they won't be take questions on this format list all the slow movements of mass movement it won't come in that okay so it's more of an application type of questions all right enough said so, so slow movements are two types fine is called creep fine and then soliflection yeah the questions usually come on these things right so understanding these concepts okay and uh, rapid movements are basically they called mud mud flows earth flow mud flow okay avalanches see the flow you know say is a type means very fast very wet right see see for example rapid movements has this flow type of uh, mass movement as well as avalanche is a slide also right is a slide which means uh, it is a dry type of avalanche may be wet may be dry both both are applicable like if you say in uh, himalayas regions where the snow fall down which are usually we are no like there are avalanches happen in himalayas regions where the snows are wet and all those things that is one type of avalanche we also see avalanches in some of the dry mountains right the soil just falls down we also have dry avalanches that's why when the rapid movements has both flow which is wet and fast and avalanche is one of the avalanche type which is a slide like dry and fast getting it so avalanche rapid movements have both flow and slide okay as any one guess slow movements will have what one will have heaves right heaves are very slow upliftment of rock so this might be a uh, part of slow movement ca categories but that doesn't mean he is the only form of slow movements no there are other slow movements as well like for example creep so what is creep i'll tell you i'll just we'll just talk about let's get into the slow movements okay let's get into the slow movements let's talk about creep so what is this creep sorry creep is first of all is a very very slow movement to an extent that you need to wait for several days several months to have a observable change in fact several years right it's like observing a flower bloom if you if flower doesn't bloom in couple of minutes right for our fascination there will be if anyone have seen youtube channels there will be camera focusing on the flower for several days and the camera is fast for video is fast forwarded to see the how the flower blooms same with the creep is also very slow movements of earth materials right extremely slow extremely slow earth materials along the along the slope so this is the this is the slope right right and then um, these are the earth materials earth materials which is slowly which moves along the slope for example if you see go if i don't have visited to tirupati and all right such uh, tirupati tirumala mountain which opened recently uh, reopened sorry 
um, the creep kind of flow can be absorbed. Means we can't absorb the uh, moment of the dog debris, but we can definitely absorb. There is a there will be some sort of electric poles, right? These electric poles which connect, which are on the Tirumala mountains, right? They would have been bent like this. This is the original pole, right? They would have bent like this. Try to absorb. The bend happens because the slowly the rock debris have moved down the hills and they are bending the, even the trees are bent, bending the trees, bending the poles. That's how we can absorb the creeps. This is called creep. Okay. All right. Next, let's say what is other slow moments. There is a creep, and the other slow moment is solely flexion. Solely flexion. Right? This is something important for prelims because solely flexion, in, without understanding its definition, it's sometimes people tend to pick up the wrong. Meaning because if someone, if you hear solid fluxion for the first time, you might not uh, feel it relevant, right? You might not feel how to relevant in the sense how to relate to this topic, right? You, you cannot even understand this. This is part of the mass moments, right? And even if you understand, maybe recollect it as a mass moment, you might not be understand which category it belongs to is it slow moment or fast moment, rapid moment, right? So we need to have this very definitions, the clarity of this words very uh, clear with this. So solid fluxion is also slow moment, right? Okay? Slow moment of this thing, right? But it is little bit faster than creep, okay? So why it is little bit faster than creep? Creep is mostly of earth materials. Earth material means heavy boulders or rock bed, or this kind of things, it slowly which moves down. Solid fluxion is mostly related to like soil masses, soil, right? It, it's mostly related to soil or fine grain rocks, like small particles, right? And this, this involves also the rain. Sorry, sorry, speed, like speed, not rain, like wet underground water, right? Water from the underground saturates this soil soil particles in the rock items and it becomes well saturated and well lubricated. What if happens if, if there is heavy rain, then what happens? It will be rapid movements, right? Naturally. But soil fluxion is more about slow movement of soil. So for the soil or rock um, like minute rock particles to move, what is required? If it requires, if it is rain, it will be fast. For it to move slowly, there should be some source of water which slowly saturates the solid particles, right? And then which will lubricate this and then it moves down the hill. That only happens when the underground water table has uh, offers some moisture to this soil particles. Okay. So this one where it happens, this usually happens in areas of moist template. It's a heave, right? Heave also happens on moist template regions, right? Soil fluxion it also happens on moist and temperate regions. If it is tropical and equatorial regions, there will be heavy downpour and you can't absorb this. If there's no rainfall and if there's moist areas like temperate regions, then we can observe the solid fluxions. All right. So how in what happens in temperate? There will be ice, right? Frost between the underground. Its surface melts because of temperature and all. And this water will definitely go up and try to um, what it does saturate this soil particles okay and then it will start flowing down very slowly this is solid fluxions 
Remember, there's no rain involved here and it's only a boat and there's no big rocks involved here and it's a slow movement, slow movement of soil. Only happens when the water from the underground seeps up and then saturates the soil particles and it's slowly moved down the hill. That happens only in moist, temperate region. So India is a tropical region, right? closer to equator, relative sense, related to uh, temperate regions. Fine. So these are the two slow movements, creep and solid fractions. Right. Let's talk about rapid movements. Rapid movements. Earth flow. Mud flow. Avalanches. These are rapid moments. The most fastest is avalanches. Earth. Wherever the term earth comes, flows, when there is a moment of earth, take it to your imagination that is very big, very huge rock or a very huge landmass. That is called Earth. Okay. That is like Earth is a planet we know, but when it comes to geography, that's how we have to imagine when something comes in the form of Earth. Okay. All right. For example, for example, if you know Earth, I means very huge, right, and very magnanimously big, very huge rock. Then what is the if something like a rock bed? Rock bed is something unweathered rock, right? If something a rock, the steep should be narrow, this should be slow, or steep should be like this. They should be steep like this, right? Only if it is more steep, then only the chances of earth flow is higher. If the steep is like very uh, the slope is not much, then the heavy boulders will not move. And it is the only <clears throat> thing. No. See, for example, there's a heavy boulder here. It still sticks to the steep, right? But it tends to slow, come down if it is again saturated, humid. If there is humidity is very high in the environment, right? So we saw water source from below, that is solid fluxion, right? Which made the, which saturated the minute soil particles, which result in slow movement down the hill, that is solid fluxion. Earth flow, we're talking about, right? If, the, if there is a rock bed, right? If there's a very huge rock bed, the movements of heavy rainfall doesn't have effect on it. Like if you have some heavy rainfall for a couple of hours, it doesn't really move. If that would have happened in uh, some of the uh, areas like Chittadurga and all, the rock would have come down every mountain and would have smashed the uh, like valley, uh, the people staying in the valley side. It's not happening for centuries. Though we see like heavy torrential downpour, the rocks, big boulders will not move. The big boulders or the rock bed will move only if it is continuously under humid climate. Humidity means that this water from above is so humid that it will saturate the entire rock bed, right? Um, and rock bed has, doesn't have even effect with underground water. If it comes also, it doesn't have an effect. What affects is humid. It should be very humid climate and then the steep will, should be very steep. Then only the rock bed will start moving down, right? And because of its mass, it moves on very rapidly. You're getting it. So this is <clears throat> again this rock may be we you know rock types, right? This rock may be you know, sedimentary rock. I hope you people have not forgotten the initial uh, chapters, sedimentary rock, or it may be igneous. Getting it. 
So these are the very big rocks, unweathered rock beds, which are saturated because of humidity. All right, and the steep is resistant slope. So that's why you should see in few areas, for example, it, it is something fascinating, right? In few areas, valleys. Up front, we can see there is a, a big mountain which have big boulders on it, and we feel as though it will fall down in the cliff. But still, government will allow people to construct homes there. Why? Because there are areas which are they don't have any humidity, right? So there are seen there is no humidity, and the slope is not that high. So that means chances are falling down the rock wall. Sliding down the hill is very, very, very rare. But in some of the forest areas, right, the government will prevent few of the people from constructing the home because there's high humidity and the steep is very slopey. But problem is uh, few people will protest. People will not understand the complete uh, geographical scientific reasons, and they might protest. Protest that okay, look, hey, look, you have approved. In some other areas, to construct a location, a close location, and they're not approving me. Um, so that such kind of conflicts will arise. So as an officers, we should know this geographical part, which are linked to sociology or human aspects. Right. So why in few areas construction are allowed down the cliffs? Why they're not allowed in other areas? These are the reasons because of humidity, because of steep slopes. So right. So that is uh, for earth flow. Mud flow, as someone can really understand, it's very uh, thing. This re mud flow requires heavy rainfall. Right. So what happens? Heavy rainfall and the heavy rainfall, and it should be weathered materials. So what is weather materials? That soil, rock, minute rock particles, right? If there's heavy, heavy rainfall on this one, this, this will get very soonly saturated, okay? And then they'll flow very rapidly down the hill, very rapidly, very rapidly to extend. They are very, very destructive, very destructive, right? So very destructive. Um, like among all the three types, mud flow is a very destructive type, right? So because of uh, naturally the, the weather materials, like right? if there's water from below, it's solid fluxion, very slow. If you torrential rainfall, it is very fast, and right? there's a rapid movement and very destructive, all right? So next is, uh, I'm not going deep into mud flow because it's very, uh, like very, very obvious and very, like, People will be aware of it, most of the times. All right, now question is, what is about avalanches? Avalanches, we have seen snow avalanches, right? So what happens, uh, I will snow to come down. One thing you should have very steep slopes, right? Narrow, narrow, Plus steep. Plus humid. It's not about rainfall, humid regions. Humid regions where the humidity contained in areas is too high. Water content in areas is too high. So if there's humid, right, it will, it will saturate the earth materials like snow, it will saturate or like soil or something, and then it's very, uh, and this is very important, narrow plus steep. These are the parameters which the geographers will uh, look into before suggesting the hikers, right? They hike the mountains, snow mountains, right? To where to hike, do the hiking exactly. If, if their hiking is an area where the, there is very steep plus narrow, Steep, they will be everywhere if you see in the Himalayan mountains. But it's also narrow, very narrow between two, say for example, the merging of two mountains. There's a narrow steep, right? very small areas where it creates a kind of a passage for the earth materials to move right, down. 
So that area is people they have to avoid. So these are the avalanches. All right. Uh, the, as I said, there is a much faster, uh, fastest among like, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, very sudden, like sudden, very fast. Avalanche is very fast. Mud flow is very, very destructive. These are the types. All right. Uh, so we're done with the class today. Uh, so I'll stay for a couple of minutes for any questions. So else we can.